and welcome back to another edition of the Where Should They Go From Here series. I am RJ West, and today we are looking at the Charlotte Hornets. And so, last season, the Hornets kind of were a disappointment. And so now, take a look at the stats here, player stats. So now, Kemba Walker, he's still... He's one of my favorite players, just because I'm a UConn fan, but... Like, that's just, he's still a guy that is not very efficient. Sometimes he'll just take some dumb shots. Like, straight out of Boston isn't a fan of Kemba Walker. And so, like, he's never really been efficient in his career. This has been his most efficient season. But he's still a guy that isn't, he isn't that much of a playmaker he's not too much of a playmaker i mean he's not it's he's his playmaking skills are definitely better than his defensive skills but having a guy like nicholas batum on who's one of the more underrated players he can do it, it all he's a pretty he's a good playmaker he's the guy that's in portland he was a good ball handler for them Defensively, he's not too good, and he's not really that efficient of a score. At least he didn't have that efficient of a year last year, but they're going to need to sort of... Well, we're going to get dive into that soon. Uh, Frank Kaminsky didn't have the most efficient year either. Didn't watch too much Charlotte Hornets basketball. I try to watch some Kemba highlights when I can, but about it and I know about Nicholas Batum he's pretty he's a pretty good player pretty good player to have on your team but for the Hornets situation defensively they're not all that good Let's take a look at their team stats here well, better than some other teams eh, eh, middle of the pack Middle of the road, middle of the pack, because they have Michael K. Gilchrist. Oh, uh, excuse me. He's a pretty good defender. Cannot shoot whatsoever, though. Bellinelli, Marco Bellinelli, bellissimo, which means lovely. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he just hasn't been, like, he just... For the Spurs, he's just the most ideal fit because, well, the Spurs are just such a unique team that they just use players that are unselfish and, you know, they give themselves up for the team. He averaged like 11 points a game for the Spurs, so that was pretty good, and he was he had his most efficient season. But when you're not efficient in the Spurs, then that's a bit of a problem, like if you're usually efficient, but you're not. So Marvin Williams is actually a pretty nice defensive power forward. Or at least that's how it, or at least he was pretty good defensively for them in 2016. I don't know about much about 2017 because I didn't pay attention to Hornets basketball as much this year. I didn't watch that much basketball this year in general as much as I did last year when we compare them. But yeah, I mean, there's Kemba, there's Cody Seller. My wow, he wasn't even 10 points per game, 62. And Kemba played most of the most of the game. Most they were relatively healthy for the whole season, relatively healthy. So I mean, they're just not. They just weren't that good of a basketball that team this year. I mean, whether or not that's losing Al Jefferson, I don't know. Because Al Jefferson, I mean, he's not good defensively, but in terms of, and I think he's one of them, if I recall correctly, he's one of the more overrated defenders in this game. He'll give you some good scoring down low, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, he is not, even that, that, that is not how good he is defensively, alright? That's not that good, but still, that's not, he's... Just not good defensively. So, he's really just one of the more. He's just really just the low post scoring big man 
not very good defensively. They have Miles Plumley too. Dang. Oh yeah, that's right, because it was in that Roy Hibbert trade. So in terms of, they have a bunch of guys that are good role players, but Kemba is not. He's not necessarily a superstar. He takes some. He takes bad shots oftentimes. He's not really a superstar. He's just. He's more of a guy that puts up numbers on a bad team and he's still not even he still didn't even have the most efficient season so now having a guy like Kemba on your roster isn't bad but you got to get some surrounding talent around him most importantly defenders so now you have Michael Kidd Gilchrist but you got to get some other guys there too like Mar there's Marvin Williams too but like in terms of players the Hornets are still kind of they're kind of young they're kind of young they're kind of not I mean they're more so young their older players are just like role players so this is really just a rebuilding team and uh, in terms of their contracts they have a lot of money tied into Michael K. Gilchrist Nicholas Batum <sighs> Miles Plumley too dang man <sighs> that's not good and they're gonna have to pay Campbell Walker so they just they don't have any salary cap flexibility since they signed Nicholas Batum to a max contract last offseason and uh, I mean he's a good player but I mean I guess that's just the way that players are getting paid now and so now as for their draft position um, I think I did this right pretty sure I did this right oh wait I haven't even gone through the lottery yet so this is just so actually, the Suns don't have the number two pick. It's actually the Lakers. But yeah, the Hornets, the, I know their pick is right. They have Frank Talikina, and that wouldn't be such a good draft pick. I don't know. I am still, I'm very wary about him because like, I just see, I see Dante Exum in him. I see Dante Exum in him. So I don't I don't think he'll be much of an addition I think you go with more so a guy like I'm not sure like you need a good shooting a good defensive shooting guard I would say or maybe you just want to trade Kemba if Josh Jackson were to fall I mean that wouldn't really work too well offensively but defensively that probably would Good. Because they already have Nicholas Batum. So, I mean, we'll see what they choose to do. In terms of draft picks, I'm not entirely sure. Mark Kaken. Guy already was a stretch guy. Ivan Rabb is a guy who's just an athletic rebounding type of guy. Jonathan Isaac is more of like... Jonathan Isaac is kind of like that jack of all trades kind of guy can do a bit of everything and do it in a nice way he's the most he's the biggest hit or miss prospect in terms of pro comparison I give him I compare him to Otto Porter I compare him to Otto Porter he could probably be better than Otto Porter but that's kind of what I see out of him and uh, yeah, so I'm not entirely sure where they should go from here because they don't have much salary cap flexibility. There's still some value guys that you can get at your spot in the draft, but you gotta, you shouldn't really spend, you shouldn't really spend a pick on Frank Talikina because a you have Kemba. And B, he just, he looks like Dante Exum to me. He looks like Dante Exum to me. So, I mean, we're just going to have to see how the Hornets go from here, where they go from here, because where or how they should go from here, I'm not sure. Because like I said, in a rough salary cap situation. So they're just going to have to find some ways to build some pieces, find maybe another an actual star next to Kemba because neither of these guys are going to be guys that would really 
lead your team to a title. But that'll do it for this edition of the Where Should They Go From Here series. The next team we will be taking a look at will be the Detroit Pistons. And so I'll see you then.